The Denver Broncos could not have had a better start to the preseason, just dominating the Minnesota Vikings on the road. So if you like the game, if you're excited for the season, go down, like this video so we can give you more Broncos content because the way Denver's playing right now, I think you're going to want a lot more videos on the Denver Broncos. Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown. I'm Matthew Peterson, and we're going to talk about this one because Denver took it to Minnesota. Just a dominating win to start the preseason all over the Vikings, 33-6, to the final score, and everyone shined. I mean, there was not a single soul on that Broncos sideline that was not smiling from kickoff to the final snap, the knee down at the end, 33-6, to the final. Locke edged out Bridgewater. We're going to dive into that later on, but he got the slight edge in this one. You check out the numbers for Drew Locke, 5 for 7, 151 yards and two TDs. It was beautiful, and one of those two touchdowns, oh my goodness. I mean, K.J. Hamler, you could fit a whole car in between him and the nearest defender. 80-yard dime right on the money. It was something to see, but a lot of great plays, a lot of good takeaways too. Let's break that. Let's break it down and more. But first, let me know, guys. Let's start it off here. Who was the biggest star of the game in your opinion? Which Broncos shined the brightest? Who was your favorite player? What was the best? Whatever it may be, hop down in the comments. Let me know who you think the biggest star of the game was. And talking about Drew Locke and Teddy Bridgewater, that heated quarterback race, it was probably the biggest quarterback battle in the entire NFL going through all of training camp, and they were listed as co-starters. In the last video, I said, I think Drew Locke's probably going to get the first snap of the game and have the first couple series, and he did that indeed. And after a quarter and about a half, he exited with nine minutes to go in the second quarter. He left Teddy behind. Um, finished, like I said, 151 yards for Drew Locke, two touchdowns amazing rating but hey I mean why not have a huge overreaction from a small sample size because it was fun and it was awesome Bridgewater he came in with a lot of big shoes uh, with big shoes to fill for what Drew Locke left behind um, after a phenomenal start and he did his job seven for eight 74 yards a nice touchdown pass to Trinity Benson Benson was one of the biggest stars of the game both quarterbacks played well but Locke he really shined he kind of Took this one over from the start and never gave the Vikings a chance. Starts the preseason and, wow, like I said, an 80-yard dime to K.J. Hamler. I mean, Ham Hamler did half, did almost 90% of the work, right? He got all the separation, but Locke just put it right in the breadbasket on the money. Only played 19 snaps, about par for the course. Probably what you expected out of Locke. You get a quarter and change out of QB1A and... Did all of you good? I mean, put up a huge number, a huge numbers. So, what you guys think here? Will Locke and Bridgewater remain co-starters? Will Drew Locke distance himself from Teddy Two Gloves? Let me know. Type Y for yes or type N for no in the comments. Are they just as close before this game as they are after this game, or do we have a little bit of separation now? On the defensive side, Patrick Surtain II. Wow. I mean, had a beautiful pass breakup on one of the first series uh, led by the Vikings offense, but he one-upped it with a wonderful pick six. I mean, just read it like a book, looked like a five-year pro out there, not like he was playing in his NFL preseason debut, and the numbers were great. Just check it out here. So he impresses, sure. Yeah, I think he did a little more than just impressing. Picked a pass off, returned at 30 yards for six. What a way to start your NFL career, even if it's not just the regular season just yet. Still, you're going to keep that ball. Uh, had some nice pass breakups. Two overall. One was in the red zone, though. Started at cornerback. The Broncos set a lot of key players. About a little over half the offense and defensive starters did not play. Bryce Callahan, Kyle Fuller, some of the bigger cornerback names. So that gave more room for Patrick and PS2. He did it all. Two, bre two pass breakups, an interception, and a touchdown. He's not keeping that game ball. He's sleeping with that game ball. That's his pillow now. He was just dynamite. Oh, I loved it. But what do you guys think? Because this was the big topic going into the season. Was that the right pick for the Broncos in the draft? Should they have gone quarterback? Well, after today, I think you liked what you saw out of Drew Locke and you loved what you saw on the defensive side. So how are you guys feeling about the PS2 pick now? You still loving it? You still have a little more buyer's remorse after watching what Justin Fields did for the Bears in his preseason debut? Pop down in the comments. You know the drill. Let me know. 
Talking about rookies, PS2 is not the only one who had a brilliant performance. Javante Williams, the second round draft pick out of UNC. Chapel Hill was all over the field, only got a couple touches, but when he got the rock, he made it count. He was flying up and down the gridiron. If you remember that first series, first play, what does he do? Just burst it right up the middle for a first down. He was all over the place. And it, now he's kind of making himself in contention for that RB1 with Melvin Gordon. The second round pick out of UNC, could he get the job? I don't know if he can win it in the preseason just because A, Melvin Gordon didn't even play today. So Fangio knows that. He also knows that Williams was going up against a lot of, you know, the second teamers for the Vikings. So he's not going to read too much into this. But what I think Javante Williams did do is he made himself known, there's a reason why you picked me in the second round. You know, he lived up to that expectation so far. That's all he can do. Once the regular season comes about, and then he's playing against some actual defensive tackles and DNs that are not going to let you just pick up 10 yards willy-nilly, that's when the big battle comes about. So... Williams, can he get that job? We'll find out. Maybe mid-season he could take it from Gordon, especially because Melvin Gordon's in that last year of his contract. I think the Broncos may be looking for a change in the guard of that RB spot. Other players that were just, I mean, simply put, excellent for the Broncos in their preseason debut. How about Trinity Benson? He was more of an under-the-radar guy, kind of a bubble player trying to make this 53-man roster. And boy, did he make a case today. Check out his numbers right there. Four receptions, 36 yards, and two touchdowns. Sure, they aren't big numbers like four and 36, but in the sample size and the time he had to work with, I mean, simply just awesome, right? Can you fill out another adjective? It's like a Mad Lib right now for these guys. The whole game was just trying to figure out what's the best way to describe how awesome this game is going for the Broncos and for the entire fan base. And Benson... He put the team on his back a little bit. Two touchdowns, one from Locke, one from Bridgewater, uh, and just all around, he made a case for himself on that final 53-man roster. The one last note I want to mention about Benson, this Broncos wide receiver room is pretty loaded, right? You got Cortland Sutton, you got Jerry Judy, K.J. Hamler, Tyree Cleveland. There's not a ton of room. So what I'm going to say for Benson is what he just did today was he made the floor for himself if he continues at this rate, a practice squad player. That's what like the low is now. He may have removed himself from cut contention. And if he doesn't make the Broncos roster, what he just did today, the whole league watched. So he may be picked up by someone else if he gets put on waivers because the Broncos don't sign him to the 53-man roster. But that's just for Trinity Benson if you're watching. Broncos fans, I'm sure we'd all love to have him suiting up in Mile High this season. Now for some injury updates. Overall, the Broncos came away in a great position in terms of the training staff. The best people you don't want to have anything to do on game day didn't do much. Except on the first play of the game, the actual opening kickoff, Trey Marshall went down with an ankle injury trying to make the tackle on the Vikings kick returner and came off the field, didn't get carted off, didn't look uber serious, but definitely didn't just pop up and jog off for a quick breather. So that's something to monitor right there for Trey Marshall. Also, Levante Bellamy. He had an amazing uh, second-half kickoff return, over 50 yards, nearly brought it to the house, but he went down with an ankle injury as well in the second half. So two ankle injuries take down the Broncos a little bit, but overall, I mean, no big injuries, nothing that's going to make you hold your breath or throw the remote inside the TV monitor or screen or whatever you're using to watch the Broncos. Overall, pretty good day health-wise, to say the least, for the Broncos. 33-6 the final for Denver over Minnesota to start the preseason. Bridgewater returns to Minnesota for a second time. Did it with the Panthers last year. Got a standing ovation when he took the field again today. But the Broncos are the ones that walk away clapping in the locker room. 33-6 the big final. It's only the preseason. So I know it's really fun when you win. But when you lose, you go, whatever, it's the preseason. Who gives a damn? But when you win, you're like, that's, that's a big win right there, Jigga Buggy. Let's do it. So what do you guys think about next week? Look ahead a little bit here. Broncos, Seahawks, Super Bowl rematch. This time Denver was the one that got that first safety um, for the scoring department. That's how they started the game, on a holding penalty in the end zone. But that's coming up next weekend. Predict the score. Get down in the comments. Let me know. Broncos, Seahawks, what's the final going to be? Who are we going to see play? Let me know down in the comments.